Hey everyone, and of course, welcome to the next edition of Forum Bytes. In this episode, it's part one of the seed moderating process, where we try and share with you best practices some things that have worked in the past to hopefully make your life a little bit easier as a seed moderator. So you've taken over as seed moderator and this is the very first video which is going to be about the what you do before your first meeting. Now I do have to say a bit of a caveat before we get into these videos. These videos are designed around a 9 to 12 month process, which is 9 to 12 meetings. But every seed process is different. Some are done in six months, some are done in nine months, some are done in two years, some are done in three months. It depends on the situation. And I'm sure you can understand making videos to try and fit every situation wouldn't work. We're gonna be going through what has worked in the past from the forum experts, lead forum experts, the, um, uh, the seed moderator committee and so on. And we brought it all together so you can cherry pick what you need. Because the seed process is different for every forum. For example, are you going in by yourself? Or are you the only person who's experienced? Are you going into a forum and are you going to stay there? Or are you, after the seed process, leaving? Are you in two forums at the same time? Are you actually going in to save a forum because the previous seeder didn't do a good job? There is so many different ways or different issues you're going to face. We can't pull a video for one fits all because it won't work. But I'm hoping over the next six videos after this, you'll be able to be given some uh, items that have worked so you can pick which ones and go ahead and do them within your seed forum process to make it easier for you. The only thing I would remind you about is cherry pick, but don't skip. If you can do some things in one meeting instead of three, fantastic. But I wouldn't skip them. Because if you skip them, you run the risk of not delivering what you're there to do, which is bringing a forum together. So let's start off with exactly that. What are you there to do within this forum? Obviously, as I just said, you're there to bring everyone together. How do you do that? You're there to make sure that everyone knows and lives the four pillars of EO, that I'm sure you remember from your training, which is the Gestalt Protocol, confidentiality, vulnerability, and taking personal responsibility, as in taking personal responsibility for your forum and EO experience. You're also there to talk about and emulate the 5%, confidentiality. You're also there uh, to make sure that they understand what coaching is like, what presenting is like. I know they've been trained, but you're there to give them a bit of feedback as you watch them do it within their own forum. People ask me a lot about what is the head KPI for, um, uh, for a seed moderating process? Is it handing out forms? Is it, you know, when I leave um, that, that they, they say, you did a great job? The best KPI that we found that works for seed moderating is the turnover rate of the forum when you leave, or when you stay, of course, if you're staying there. Because obviously, no one leaves a great forum experience unless, of course, they've sold their business. So the turnover rate is the easiest way I've been able to measure the success of a seed program. So now the next step is, what do you do before your first meeting, which is the purpose of this video? You've now been given the task by your board to be a seed moderator. You've been given the six or seven people that are going with you. What do you do first? First thing you should do is make sure you have all the information about these new members, what businesses they work in, where they've come from, their, maybe their application form, just so you can get an idea of who they are. Before your first meeting, you need to call them. Preferably, it'd be good to go and see them. Believe me, nothing replaces face-to-face -face meetings, but if you, I know everyone's busy, so at least a phone call is actually in, is better than nothing at all. You need to have a quick conversation with them, just saying, look, introduce who you are, what you're there to do, which is not only to reinforce the process, but to learn and grow yourself. You're also there to remind them about one thing you'll be doing at your, um, at your forum, your first forum when it's coming up, is about a lifeline. Now, this is not the full lifeline. This is not like, you know, 20 minutes each. This is a five minute lifeline for each one of them to present to not only allow you to get to know them better, but also to get the group to get to know them better. Now, if they've already done it together at their training, do it again anyway, because there's another thing they have to add to that. They need to tell the group the one main thing they want to get from this forum experience that they're going into. And this is something which is really important to you. The next thing you do is you also just have a conversation with them about the date for the actual first meeting. Don't do that on the phone. Do that via email, a doodle poll, or whatever makes it easier for you to pull everyone's diary together. And try and decide on that first meeting. Because you'll decide on the rest of the meetings after that. Believe me, that first meeting is sometimes the hardest, trying to get everyone lined up. 
Once you've spoken to everyone and you've set that meeting, the next thing you also do is grab a blank constitution or even bring your constitution from your forum that you had before and maybe copy and paste certain parts because that constitution is going to be the main part of the actual first meeting. And then, of course, obviously you can collect any other data from and, and answer any other questions they may have leading into your first questions. Now, a couple of hurdles to avoid. One of the largest hurdles I've seen brand new uh, C, um, moderators do is do too much too quickly. They try and ram everything into the first meeting. And you have to try and remember what it's like to be a brand new member. The Gestalt language protocol, which is a new word, the confidentiality, sharing 5%. I remember the lifeline in my first meeting. That lifeline blew me away of how in-depth and personal it, it was. So don't try and do too much too quickly. And don't worry, in the next couple of videos, we'll go through what to do in the first meeting, second meeting, and so on. But it's funny how some people run so fast that they lose the group because they just can't keep up. The other hurdle as well is make sure that you're talking to them regularly. Remember, your expectations of EO and being committed and 5%, you already know what they are. They don't. They don't know what the EO commitment is yet because they don't know what that is. So you need to actually live that commitment. Now for the next video, we'll be going through uh, our first meeting, uh, what you do at that first meeting and what are the outcomes that you aim for. But as always, if anyone has any questions or marks about what you do before the first meeting, just leave them in the comment section. If uh, you haven't subscribed already so you can get these videos, you know what to do. Just hit that subscribe button now. And as always, I'll see you in the next episode.